Hi, my name is James. Today I'm going to show you our new flagship table saw sled and all the things that it can do. Like all crosscut sleds, of course, it does crosscuts very well. But this table saw sled is unique. It's not just a crosscut sled. It's something we've been working on for a little over a year and has a lot of amazing design features and abilities. For example, it will make picture frames. And you're not limited by size. The front fence has a quick disconnect feature, so you can make picture frames with the sides to it as big as you like. And it's extremely accurate. The triangular guide that holds the sections of picture frame in place was cut using the rules of geometry. It wasn't cut with a tape measure or a framing square or a speed square. It's cut so that it's perfect. The resulting angles that this cuts are not accurate to a degree or a tenth of a degree or a hundredth of a degree. They're absolutely perfect. They're spot on 45 degrees. So if you're designing or building an elaborate picture frame, then perfect for the angles is exactly what you want. Another feature that's usually reserved for dedicated miter sleds that we've incorporated into our crosscut sled is the ability to cut miters. Uh, this incorporates a digital angle finder and it cuts also perfect. It cuts to the accuracy of the digital angle finder which is about to the hundredth of a degree. And you can see we check this here against a Kynex stainless steel 45 degree square. This little square is accurate to the thousandth of an inch and it felt spot on. But sometimes you want to cut a miter that's considerably larger uh, than something short. No problem here because the quick disconnect front fence comes off and this removable section of the back fence comes off and you're not limited by length. You can cut a board just as big as you want to pick up and set down on top of your table saw. You can use the clamping system to clamp the board down before you cross cut it. And we have the exact same accuracy here. We're going to cut a 45 degree here and we'll mate these up and check out the accuracy that they produce. But you're not limited to 45. With this miter slide you can cut any angle that you like. If you want to use really long boards though, you are limited to something in between about 0 and 46 degrees. Alright, so we'll take a quick look at this. We'll line these guys up. We'll take a quick look at this up against another Kynex uh, stainless steel square. And now we have a feature that I love and I use a lot actually, uh, and that's the ability to do bevel cuts. Miter cuts are great, and that's pretty unusual, but bevel cuts are fantastic to be able to do on a sled. Normally if you do that, you've kind of ruined your sled, but with the zero clearance inserts that go both ways, you can re easily set this saw up to cut bevel cuts. Anywhere from zero to 45 or whatever bevel cuts your saw will make. Another cool thing with the zero clearance inserts is you just spread them apart a little bit wider and you can cut dados. You could cut rabbits, or you could use the ability to cut dados and rabbits and you can cut a tenon. You can cut a perfect tenon. And that's really handy. Um, if you build tables, and I used to build a lot of tables, it's nice to have a jig that you can quickly make an accurate tenon with. And there's nothing more accurate than, of course, a table saw sled. So some like the tenons like that, insert them, and some people want shoulders on the top and bottom of that board. Of course, this will do that too. We could readjust the depth a little bit if need be. And simply put it right back up against our stop. That's a homemade stop. I'll show you how to make one of those and save you a ton of money over trying to buy a commercial one. Because you know, might notice you don't even need top track on a sled like this. You build your own stop and you don't need top, top track and you've saved like 75 or 80 bucks. And there you go. So we've cut a tenon all the way around. And the cool thing about this is the shoulders are perfect. The shoulders are all exactly in the same plane. So it's going to come perfect against your leg. And then when you're all done with that, of course, it just takes a minute or so to put the table saw sled back together. You just readjust the uh, zero clearance inserts, clean it off, and you're back to table saw sled operation and you can do your cross cutting again. All right, let me show you how this beast is made. It's really pretty straightforward, and what I have done is used 3 8 inch plywood. And you can check Home Depot, and you can actually buy 3 8 inch subfloor 
plywood, which is reasonably good quality. It's not too bad. It's not the best, of course. I've used Baltic birch here, which is absolutely the best. But you can get a little bit cheaper uh, plywood there. In fact, it's really cheap. I think it's about $30 a sheet uh, for a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet. Um, you can look it up at Home Depot. I guarantee it. I've actually looked it up at Home Depot in about 10 different states just to verify. But it's, uh, it's subfloor, and it's 3 eighths of an inch thick. It's actually a little bit less than that, but... Uh, Three inch thick plywood, thirty bucks, and then it takes about a half a sheet to do this, so you're only out fifteen bucks of wood. You know, you can make two sleds, you could use the rest of the wood for something else, and so that's a good option. Of course, if you have the funds, the Baltic birch is vastly superior. It's much, much flatter. It's less likely to warp, although, you know, it can it can warp and bend a little bit. Uh, once the sled's all glued together, it's not so bad. But basically, it comes with, uh, there's a pretty simple set, a pretty simple cut list. Uh, I will have plans for this, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, you just cut all the parts down. The sled is 24 by 32. But instead of making it exactly that size, I've made the whole sled like one-eighth under in all those dimensions. And that accounts for the kerf of the saw blade. So when you're cutting the sled down, you really have zero waste out of that half of a sheet of plywood. So you'll just cut the various pieces. They're going to end up looking something like this. And 3 8 inch plywood is also nice because it makes for a very, very lightweight sled. And you only have a thickness of 3 quarters, which is basically like a normal sled uh, that somebody would make with a normal 3 quarter inch piece of plywood, except this thing is not solid top and bottom, so it weighs a whole lot less. This sled comes in at less than half the weight of our previous sled, which is really handy. So the first thing I'm doing is taking those little pieces that I had cut and I'm just nailing this safety box together. This ends up getting glued onto the back of the back fence. It's got a little clear plastic top. And that's where the blade will pass through. And as you notice, a lot of this plywood, of course, will have minor warps, especially if you get the cheaper stuff from Home Depot. But it really doesn't make any difference because the magic about something like this is that once you glue these things together, and I kind of put the warps opposing to each other to kind of help flatten it out, but the act of gluing it together and gluing it to a flat surface, like I'm doing here to my assembly table, you can also glue it together on your, um, on your table saw. Your table saw has an extremely flat surface. But you see, I'm clamping it to my assembly table here, and that's ensuring that this piece dries dead flat. So I have cut the pieces to size, so we do want to make sure that we take the time to get them glued up together evenly. So I've got clamps holding them side by side and end to end. And that was the front fence. Now I'm going to cut, or I'm sorry, I'm going to glue together the back fence. The back fence is segmented, as you can see here, and it comes apart in portions. I'm just going to quickly put these pieces together, and then I'll stand it up, and I'll show you how it comes apart. So it's got an empty section in the middle there. And that's for our removable clearance inserts, which slide back and forth. And this piece I'm clamping together on the left is going to become the removable portion of the back, back fence, which you might have saw in the preview at the very beginning there. So I'm just putting it together so you can kind of get a look at it. And the whole back fence is only an inch thick this way. You use three of these pieces. It's just barely over an inch. Zero clearance insert plates will go here, and they'll move forward and backward, and they're replaceable. And that way, you have zero clearance everywhere, and that's the removable section. You've got zero clearance in the base, and that's what holds that together. And we'll have a blind nut in the front. So that's what that fence looks like. And now we'll go ahead and glue that together. Now, as much as I like glue, we really don't want to put too much glue on this because there's going to be a lot of cleanup coming off the sides. And we just don't need that for a project like this because we do need to make sure that these line up accurately. Um, since we did cut them to exact size, we're not going to joint them or, or cut them down later. So they need to be perfect and they need to not have too much glue. Now, if you like this table saw sled, I have done something unique this time, and that is we are selling the sleds themselves. So the plans, of course, will be available just like all of our plans. Uh, but this particular project, we're going to sell the sled itself. And the sled that we provide to you will need a little bit of assembly to come together. Uh, because it does get flat packed out to you. But basically, you'll assemble what needs to be assembled, and then you'll mate it to your table saw. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. And that can be done in about 10 minutes, so it's not a big, extensive project. 
Um, all of the important things will be cut on either laser or CNC machines, so they're going to be exactly perfect. It will come with Baltic birch, plywood, of course, all the hardware. Every piece of hardware that you see on the sled will come with the sled, and I'll talk about that as the time goes on. And it'll actually be on sale for the first couple weeks after I release the video. So if you want a table saw sled and you don't want to build it, you can consider buying this one. It's going to be priced quite a bit less than something like the Incromiter 5000, but it does quite a few more functions uh, than that. So you see how I've kind of clamped this thing, so front to back there, and we're clamped it flat to the table as well. And that makes sure uh, that, that uh, it's all mated up nicely. And this is the little removable portion, so I'll glue this up next. And I don't even want to let the glue come all the way to the edges here because it's just more to clean off. This glue really has 3,200 pounds per square inch of bonding strength once it's clamped and glued. So if I'm missing a square inch or two, you know, on this joint, it's not going to make any difference. It's so strong, it'll never come apart. And we want to make sure it's made it up nicely. And that one is. And we want to make sure it's clamped really well. If you don't clamp these fences together nice and they're not perfectly tight, you know, no gaps in between the portions of fence, then it's not going to function well in the sled. It's going to be hard to square the sled. So I have used a quick setting glue, and after about five minutes, I've taken it off and trimmed off the excess. Now this is another thing that I'm going to offer as an option, and that's templates, paper templates. These paper templates are to help you cut out the shapes of the pieces if you need it for the curves, but also to help you align the holes exactly for all of the screws that need to go in and hold the sled together. It's actually pretty easy to measure them, and I'm going to show you exactly how to measure these holes, but some people still don't want to do it, and of course this is printed to a high level of accuracy, so you can just simply overlay the pieces of the sled with the paper and mark your holes, and they'll be exact. So it's an option. Uh, it's not required. It's not part of the plans. Most people don't want it, but if you want it, it'll be available for a small fee. And so, for example, you might put this on the back, or this is the front fence, sorry, and you can trace that out. And if you hold the fence up on end, this is a this quick disconnect feature of this fence means I'll need a couple of holes that go all the way through it for the bolts and the star knobs. And you can use this to line up your holes. You can measure it just as easy, uh, but if you use this to line up the holes, you just get that mated up perfectly to the fence, and you just center punch it right there. But I'm going to measure this one, and I'm going to show you a technique for measuring it. And then once we measure it, we'll line up that paper and make sure they both are the same. So we've got nine and three quarter inches there. And we'll just use this uh, double square to make it perfect. You can use any kind of a square there. Make it cross the whole section. And then I like to double check the measurement and make sure that it crossed uh, uh, across the line perfectly. Then I'm going to get a thickness of this piece because I want to go to the center of the thickness. And the piece came in at 0 0.720 for both pieces. Divide that by 2 and it's 0.36. So I'm going to set my calipers for 0 0.36, 0 0.3600, there you go, and lock those down right there. And Then I'm going to hook that on one side and get a really sharp pencil and mark it. I know my hand is obscuring the camera a little bit. Then I'm going to hook it on the other side, use my same sharp pencil, mark it again. And those two should line up right there in the center, and they do, which is good. And let's see how it lines up with this. Once I get it to the end perfectly, I'm just going to go ahead and center punch right through the paper and forget that I even marked it down below and just see how those, uh, those two made up. This is how you do it if you didn't want to measure. And then we'll take a quick look. And you can see, there it is. It's actually dead perfect right in my line. So those work out really well. So for the people who would like to have um, templates, that will help. 
Um, the templates, unfortunately, don't come with the plans. They are an extra charge. I actually pay 10 bucks for the templates to have them printed in bulk, and I just I sell them for 10 bucks. They're 9.95, so I don't make any money on them. And like I said, a lot of people don't want them, but I do have them for for those people who do want them. Uh, but they are separate uh, from the plans. So you're going to see me use this drill press fence a lot, and, and I guess I'm going to designate MagSwitch as the unofficial uh, sponsor of this video. MagSwitch makes this drill press fence, and it makes my life so much easier. In fact, I'm, I'm using a lot of MagSwitch tools for this, and uh, I'm going to put links to some of these things down below. So we're just going to consider them the unofficial sponsor of this video. Um, I like a lot of their stuff. I think they do fantastic uh, work. Um, they really make shop, uh, the shop a safer place and an easier place to get your stuff done. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use the template here instead of measuring since I have one. And I am going to cut the shape of the front fence out. So I'm going to use a bandsaw. I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen my Adirondack chair videos and you can very, very easily cut this out with a jigsaw. I realize that a table saw fence is something that every new woodworker needs to have. It's probably one of the first uh, jigs or tools that you need to build. And so a lot of you guys probably won't have a, uh, a bandsaw yet. No big deal. Cut it out with a jigsaw. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how ugly it is, but you can actually still do a good job. Um, and what, whatever's not perfect, you can just sand. And I am going to use uh, a sander, like a, a belt sander for it, this rigid oscillating spindle sander. But if you don't have one of these, no big deal. Just use a belt sander. If you don't have a belt sander, just put some coarse grit on whatever sander you have and just take a few minutes and sand it nice and smooth. Get the curves looking nice. But it's just for looks. It doesn't really matter if they're absolutely perfect, okay? We're just doing this to take some weight off of the front fence. I'm going to go ahead and just do a small radius round over on this. You could just as well sand this. I want to eliminate any possibility of getting splinters from it. Since it is plywood, of course, Baltic birch is so nice. The plies are all even and uniform that that's not really much of a problem. You can see the holes there. That's why I drilled the holes first. And then I will go ahead and sand it. I'll just sand it using 180 grit. And I'll use 180 grit for most of this project. And I'm going to go ahead and put a chamfer on the back fence. The chamfer is right at the very bottom. You see I have the insert plates in place. They're actually double-sided taped down so they don't move. So I can get this chamfer. This chamfer is going to act like a dust channel. And I'll point that out again when, uh, when it's assembled on the sled. It's kind of a little place for dust to go. So when you slide a board back against this back fence to cut it, uh, the dust doesn't jam up and prevent you from getting a nice flat contact with the fence. So that dust channel is nice. And it goes all the way across there, including on those inserts. And I'm just going to pull those off now. And then I like to hand sand these. Now these things were cut on my CNC machine, but you can also cut them by hand. And you know, the CNC machine, that's probably also another kind of unofficial sponsor for this video. I'm going to show you some clips of that, either in this sequence or the next one. Uh, the CNC machine is very nice. <laughs> it makes quick work of cutting a lot of these parts. And here I am going to take that removable section and put a hole in it so that I can drill them together. I can screw them together when we, for the times we don't want it separated. And I've measured that to be right in the dead center, so you could flip it either way. And I am drilling out the holes now for the zero clearance insert. I just took my time. I measured those holes accurately. And you can do that as well. You could get the templates if you need. Of course, you could always buy the sled if you prefer that. Or you can just copy this video. Um, I make it pretty straightforward. It's a long video, and there's going to be another part to it. I'm going to try to um, make this as, as easy as possible to follow so that you, you don't have to spend any money at all if you don't want to. You see the advantage of that fence back there is that once I have that lined up, I can just move this left and right, and then I can flip it around and move it left to right uh, because these the, the holes are the same distance off of either side. I've made everything in this project that way where the holes are the same distance off of either side. So you just get that fence set up once, and it's good for the whole project. And that's kind of convenient. And then I'm going to switch to this bit and use the fence again because the center of the bit is still lined up over the center of the hole. and I can make a space for those blind nuts.
And I want to make sure the blind nut, the hole for the blind nut is low enough to where it's buried in there. We don't want it to stick out past the back. Same way with that side. And then when that's done, we'll just flip the board around and we'll do the other side. And that's it. That's what that looks like. And the blind nuts will go in there. And the blind will go in the front of that side. So let's take a look here. I will have to adjust the fence because this one's in the middle. Super easy to adjust. The fence is magnetic. You flip a switch, move it, and then flip a switch back and the magnet locks back in place. And we want to make sure this is below the surface too because we have material that comes against the front of the fence so we don't want it to be um, pushed outward because of the blind nut. And that right there works perfectly. All right, now this is the bottom. This is a mock-up that I have. But I want to show you that the bottom of the sled, the blind nuts that come through it that hold these zero clearance inserts, they're going to come a little proud. But it doesn't really matter because they're going to fall into the slot on the zero clearance insert. So it's not a problem. So if you drill them a little deep and they stick up, that's no big deal. All right, now let's put these suckers in. I'll show you how that works. We just hammer them in about as far as you can go. And then I put a screw in. You know, just if, if you get it threaded at least about halfway down, then you can hit on the head of the screw. And it'll continue driving that blind nut down until it's seated. And the screw will come right back out. They're both strong steel. It won't damage a thing. And then we want to check and make sure that it's actually below the surface so it doesn't interfere with anything, and it is. And then I like to put a few drops of CA glue somewhere around the perimeter, maybe in these little sl slot sections where the wings were folded up, and freeze those, and that's going to prevent that blind nut from ever coming out. Now you might notice that the blind nut sticking through here is a little bit of a problem. I can't quite focus. There we go. Uh, we don't want that sticking out proud because uh, we've got to put our removable section of fence in there and it rubs and that's really a pain in the butt. So you just take a file and I don't know 50, swi 50 swipes with the file and that just uh, sands that flat. So that's no problem and then the fence will go back together nicely. No problem at all. all right now I'm going to show you how to make these uh, zero clearance inserts by hand. I'm going to show you how to how to how to lay it out. So what I have done is I've marked the center of those slots. Just got an exact measurement. Then I'm taking these double squares and I'm making sure that line goes all the way across. And then I'll set my calipers to 17 30 seconds. And then I'm going to use the tail that comes off the caliper and I'm going to adjust that double square to exactly meet that depth. Now I was fairly precise here in getting to a 30 second but it's really not that critical. If you make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger it doesn't make any difference. Um, your zero clearance insert may travel a little bit less or travel a little bit more. It's not a big deal. Um, I did set it up for exact measurement, and this is probably the most complex measurement in the whole thing, and it's just to a 32nd. If you have a set of calipers, it's super easy. So I did use the double square to mark it, that distance off of the edge. And that's kind of the center point of the first few holes, and I checked it with the tape measure. Now the first hole is a slot that goes all the way through. This is where the threaded part of the, of the screw is going to go all the way through. I'm going to hold that on there, and I'm going to pound that on until I can see the marks from the whole bit, from the whole round bit. It's a Forstner bit. These things are pretty strong, especially the small ones, so we're not really damaging the bit. But we can see the curves on the bit. I don't know if you can quite see it from this camera angle, but you'll be able to see it in a moment. And I'm going to trace that. So this is going to be like the width of this drill bit. I'm going to trace it on both sides. That's a slot that we have to plow out or you know drill out all the way across. Now I'm going to put the bit back in place and I'm going to use that bit to actually draw the, uh, the curve around there. So we're using the tools themselves that are, that are going to drill this out 
to help us mark it. Now I'm going to go with the bigger bit. Now this bigger bit represents a shelf. The head of the screw goes inside of there and rests on the shelf, whereas the screw, the threaded shaft of the screw itself goes all the way through to go into the blind nut. The head has to rest on a shelf. Now you can see how that, that those have made indentations on the wood. And we're going to draw that on both sides. Get out to where that indentation is and draw that. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that, uh, that bigger Forstner bit back in and just kind of twist it around. You can watch me here. I'm twisting it around um, to make a curve. So real simple. And that's what it looks like. We're just going to cut that out. You got eight of those to do, and they're not super fast. It's going to take you about five to uh, eight or ten minutes a piece. So that's it. That's the slowest part of the whole project. One thing we're going to do for those who want it, we're just going to sell zero clearance inserts. So if you just want to avoid this whole thing, we can sell them to you. But you should at least make a set. It's good for you to make them, good for you to learn to do some precision work if you don't already know how. Many of you do know how, but if you're new to it, give it a shot, you know. It, uh, it will increase your precision, increase your woodworking skill. All right, so we're going to first start with the small bit, and we're going to drill this one all the way through. Remember, this is the slot that goes all the way through for the shaft part of the screw. Now, it's bigger than the screw by a fair amount, by about a sixteenth. So if you drilled it off a little bit, it really won't matter. The screw will go in, and there's some play. Everything in the system has some play built into it. So you don't have to have hyper accuracy. It may look like it, but it's really not needed. So then we'll just take this Forstner bit and we'll drill all the way across. And I really recommend a Forstner bit here. There's only two sizes you need for this whole project, but I really recommend getting a Forstner bit. If you don't have a set, just, just buy a couple of individual bits. You can get cheaper ones at Rockler for like five bucks. And you do have to have a chisel. You don't have to have a set, but you have to have a chisel. These chisels are really affordable, pri affordably priced. Uh, they're Narex. These are some of the highest rated chisels made, and they're really not a bad price. You can get them from Taylor Toolworks. I'm going to put a link in the description for them. And even if you're a power tool woodworker, you need a set of chisels. If you don't have the budget right now, no problem. Just go get any cheap chisel, sharpen it up, and you can do this. But if you haven't bought a set of chisels yet and you have the money, get a set of chisels get something like this narex it's a killer set really good starter set and it rated number one out of like 50 or 60 different sets so it's a it's a good set of chisels it's in the hundred something dollar range i don't recall the exact price uh, but it's a really good value all right so use the chisel to get it close and then i'm just going to take something like a popsicle stick or a tongue depressor and wrap a piece of 120 grit paper around it or coarser and we're just kind of kind of sand that for a moment and it's actually pretty easy to sand those those peaks smooth if you're really skilled at the chisel which i'm not i really don't uh, spend much time with it although i do have to use it everybody has to use chisels um, if you're really skilled you may get it perfect right off the bat a little tougher with plywood but the sandpaper maybe one minute or less and it straightens it right out and that's perfect that's all you need you don't have to be more accurate than that all right, now we're going to drill the shelf. The key about the shelf is that you drill it halfway through. Now you can do this with a handheld drill if you clamp the wood down, but it is a lot easier with a drill press. So if you have a drill press, I recommend using it. But it's the same basic technique. You're gonna drill halfway through the wood. We want the shelf at the halfway point there roughly. If you go a little under or a little over, it's not gonna make a difference, but you're gonna target the halfway point. So the wood is about 3 eighths, so you're targeting about 3 sixteenths. Since um, no plywood is actually um, a standard measurement, they're all metric measurements, there's actually 9 millimeter, so it's actually 4 tenths of a millimeter shorter than 3 eighths. But it doesn't matter, just drill to, you know, half a 3 eighths and you'll be fine. So there you go, you see, we've got the shelf started by drilling those out all along that line and now we're just gonna go back to the chisel we're just gonna go back to our straight line that we drew and basically chisel off these peaks if your chisel is nice and sharp which you know mine's not <laughs> uh, it'll cut this a lot easier but even so it's not bad 
and this doesn't have to be perfect. You know, your screw just has to slide back and forth, and there's some play because that uh, the gap on that shelf is actually wider than the head of the screw, so you have some play. All right, now I'm going to start on the center plate for the bottom. Now, if you have a dado blade set up uh, for your saw, you want to get it out and cut a dado in this centerpiece. The measurements are there in the plans. It gets a dado on both sides. It's just a really shallow dado because it's going to hold the uh, uh, the T-track, but it's not um, going to be cut the whole depth because you've got a piece of uh, another piece of three eighths inch plywood on top. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So it was that easy. And you, if you don't have a dado, don't worry about it. We can do this without without cutting any dado cuts. So that goes in the dado cut. And then when the top board goes on you see that the T-Track is now a little bit below the top board and that's what you want. You can either be flush with it or a tiny bit below, no problem. But you don't want the T-Track higher. There's another mag switch tool that holds that wood down when you're cutting those dados so it doesn't rise up in the middle. That way the dado is uniformly cut all the way through. All right, so I have drilled some holes in it and now I'm ready to go ahead and install the T-Track. So I did make a little mistake here. Um, I actually meant to cut the T-Track, cut about an inch and a half off the T-Track, uh, or two inches, sorry, off the T-Track so that it's shorter so I could get the bolt in and out. Uh, this is my self-centering drill bit. It's a VIX bit. So we'll pretend like my T-Track's a tiny bit shorter on one side. It's gonna be a tiny bit shorter on the side that's uh, at the back fence, but this uh, center board is completely symmetrical, so you don't have to have decided which one's the back yet. We'll flip it around. We'll put the T-Track in the other side. Same thing. Use the self-centering drill bit to drill out the holes first. I usually like to put one hole, put a screw, and then I put the remainder of the holes in the remainder of the screws. The one screw kind of holds it in place while we drill the remainder of the holes. So that's it. All right, now the important part. So what I've done is on my table saw, I have set up a straight edge going along the front and a straight edge going along the side and I've taken the time to clamp it down and make sure they're square to this framing square. Now we know the framing square is not dead on perfect and that's okay, it doesn't have to be. But it's going to help this assembly go really fast and really accurate. So pay attention, this is how we put this thing together. Piece number one, the bottom outside runner goes on the left and then we put our center board. Then the top outside piece goes on the left right there like that. And this is the bottom right outside runner. And then this top piece. And then we want to push that runner in so that it's perfectly flush with the edge. And this is the top inside board. Goes next to the T-Track. And the other top inside board. And then our two pieces of zero clearance insert will go there. That's the entire sled. That's exactly how the sled goes together. It's really simple. And if you have this set up, on your table saw or any flat surface like an assembly table or whatever you can assemble this thing in about five to ten minutes real simple let's take a look at it from the front and see you can see how the thing is hollow on the bottom on both sides so we've eliminated all that weight those outside runners keep it stable and flat and running on the table saw and that's what it looks like so that's the nice thing about this sled is it's very lightweight so the pieces are stamped if you decide to buy the sled and you have to do any pre-assembly um, before you made it to your saw. And you'll know exactly what piece is what. I only have two stamped there, but they're all stamped actually. We're going to use uh, the quick setting glue here as well, the speed set. And let's go ahead and assemble this piece and see how it goes. We're just going to do this in real time. And it's just going to take a couple of minutes, you'll see. So we'll put that piece on, or glue on that piece and we'll put glue on this one. That's the bottom outside runner. And that's the center board I'm putting glue on now, but it just goes on the left side of that track. And that track is what's given us the position or the distance to the spacing that we need to make this just right. And I put some on the, this top outside board. Make sure that's tight against your, against your straight edge. And we'll put this on. And it's gotta go on that as well. And then we'll slide both of those pieces back tight to the straight edge that's closest to me there. 
That's Ryan helping me. That's my one of my daughter's boyfriends. He's uh, fairly new to woodworking. He's been with us for several months, but he's learning fast. He loves it, and uh, he, d he does really good work. All right, now we're going to go to the other side. Same thing, the bottom outside runner. And the two outside runners are identical. And these two outside top boards, those are also identical. So you can't really mess up. Everything in this sled is symmetrical left to right. So we get glue on those. We'll flip this upside down and put this in place. Same way, we're going to put it on the left side here first. And then we're going to go ahead and let that uh, piece there extend a little bit past the outside. Can't quite see it. And then I'm going to push it in snug with this board so that it's perfectly lined up. All right, now we have to do the top inside boards on both sides. They're going to go just inside of that T-track. They're going to touch the T-track. Just like that. And one for the other side. Just like that, and the space that's left in the middle is the space for our zero clearance inserts. We haven't cut the sled apart yet. We don't want to cut that apart until later, of course. Let it dry for a couple of minutes, and then we'll scrape some of this excess stuff off. And then when it's fully dry, we can sand it. But you see how we've lined everything up perfectly? That's important since all the pieces are cut to size. So we'll scrape what we can. And we're going to use these really nice gravity clamps to hold everything in place. Anything works, gallon jugs, whatever you got. But you do want it held nice and flat and tight. Giant nut like that, that works fine. And that's what it looks like from the front. Ah, at this point, either side could be the front because it's symmetrical. All right, over here I've got some plywood and there's our CNC. It's over there cutting out zero clearance inserts and it looks like the bit's dull because it's starting to shred the wood. Fortunately, that sands off very nicely, very easy. And here we go. So that is all set. Now, uh, the holes are drilled, but I'm going to show you that you don't have to have a drill press to put in the T-nuts. You can see it's a little sloppy to start, but it's really no problem. Everything is going to sand just fine. The T-nut's going to go in just fine. And if it's, you know, off-center, a teeny bit to the left or a tiny bit to the right, it doesn't make any difference. There's definitely some leeway for error in this sled, and that's why I'm putting these in by hand to show you that. The only thing we want to make sure of is that we get it deep enough so that the blind nut is completely below the surface of the wood. You can see I checked it there. Of course, if you end up buying the sled from us, all of these are drilled, all the T-nuts are inserted, all the complex work is done. Once again, we're going to put a screw partway in, in order to fully seat this T-nut. And I want to make sure that it clears. It does. Good. Now we can wax the sled and it'll slide nicely without scraping the table saw. We'll do the same thing here. We want to put a little bit of CA glue to lock these blind nuts into place so that they never come out and cause a problem. And a little bit of spray of accelerator. We'll seal those in. That's half the sled. We'll flip it around and do the other half. When we're done with that, we're going to sand the sled down. So you can see putting things in by hand, that's no problem. I also like to sand the corners a little bit. And the, the stamps, any stamps that are on it, when you, if you decide to buy the sled, they'll sand right off, no problem. And because we are using plywood, I typically just do 240 grit because all I'm trying to do is smooth it out, uh, get a little bit of uh, dust flaking or chipping off of the sides, and uh, gets it nice and smooth and gets it clean. And we're going to go ahead and wax it. This is going to be the first of a couple of coats of wax. I like to put a couple of coats on the bottom just to make sure this thing slides well. I'm not going to put a finish or a lacquer or anything first. I like to start with wax. I want the wax to penetrate the wood and uh, give us a good coat and a sealant that way. Okay, if you remember, I said that this project, you do not actually have to uh, cut a dado if you don't want to or you don't have that ability. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We have a sled mock-up here. This is, this is a sled half that we mocked up for doing some calibration work. And you can see that the T-track is actually taller than the plywood itself. No big deal. It's actually 0.4 millimeters taller. 
I'm just going to take some rough sandpaper. 40 grit works fantastic for this. We'll take the T-Track, flip it upside down. We want to do the bottom side of the T-Track, and we're going to sand it. It just takes about two, three minutes, uh, maybe five minutes at most, to sand off four tenths of a millimeter. You just want to sand the whole thing until it's nice and uniform and silver, and check it. And if it's not quite there, sand it a little bit more. Now you got to take that anodizing off and just get a little bit into the surface. And we're going to put it back in here and we're going to check it and see if it's a good height now. And you can see that it is. It's perfect. So that's all you need to do if you don't want to cut the dado in that bottom center board. And since we didn't cut that dado in the bottom center board, it's now critical uh, to position these in the right spot. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So they need to go exactly three quarters of an inch away from the edge and it's got to be uniform all the way across. And that's simple. We have a tool for that that we're going to put on the sled later and that's our miter bar. It goes down below. It's exactly three quarters of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and just set that in place and clamp it down. I like to kind of clamp it loosely a little bit at first and then just tap it back and forth and um, check it. Put a straight edge up against it and make sure it's exact. And we can check this here with our uh, double square. And we can see it's perfect all the way across. It just takes a second or two to get this thing set up. And that is your guide for the T-Track. Once again, I'm installing a full length of T-Track here when I should be uh, installing one that's a couple of inches shorter, but no problem. Uh, well, you'll see when the sled's all done, I did pull this back out and I shortened it to the right length. So we're going to use our same self-centering drill bit. I like to drill one hole in the middle first, put a screw in, and that gives us a nice firm hold and we can drill the remainder of the holes and then install the remainder of the screws. And then once we're done with one side, we will flip the board around because of course it's symmetrical. Uh, just double check it there and it's perfect still, good. We'll flip the board around and we'll do the exact same thing to the other side. Alright, so once we have our sled put together, we can insert or put the uh, zero clearance inserts in. And these are the screws for it. It's quarter inch by 20 and 7 16 inch long. You can use a socket head cap screw, which I kind of prefer over Phillips, uh, or you can get Phillips sometimes. Sometimes it's, you can only find one or the other. And I just, I like these ball hex drivers. Um, I'll put a link to these in the in the description. A lot of people ask me about these. It's just really nice to use a screwdriver here instead of an actual Allen wrench. They don't have to be straight up and down in there. Uh, but this is how they operate. Pretty straightforward. Got a lot of space in the middle there so you can put dados or whatever. Alright, looks like now we're making the determination. This is going to be the front of the sled. It was symmetrical of course up till this point. But now we're going to go ahead and mount the front of the sled here. The front part of the sled is the part that's away from the operator. It's like a car, right? You push the thing forward, forward onto the table saw. That's the forward, the front direction like a car, so that's the front of the sled. The back of the sled is the opposite side. That's the side nearest the operator. Pretend like you're the driver sitting on top of the sled. It's easy to see what's the front and what's the back in that scenario. All right, so we just put that in, clamp that down. Now, one thing I do want to do so that I can make some careful adjustments to the back of the sled. When I go to uh, um, install the back fence and I go to square it perfectly to the saw, I need the whole thing very stable. More stable than what these clamps will provide. So I'm going to put some screws in temporarily. Once the sled has been installed and squared fully on the table saw. Then we'll just come back and take those extra screws out because they're completely not necessary. And then we have our quick release fence. All right, so we're gonna put this together. I do have a knob for this. Um, I don't know where it is. So I'm just gonna put a screw in here for right now. And we're gonna line it up. Now, it this is also symmetrical. It's the same distance on the left as it is on the right, away from the edge. Make a little mark once I have it centered so it's easy to go back to. And we're going to put some clamps. Just put them lightly at first. 
and get it lined up just right. We do want to make sure the fence is square up and down, perpendicular to the uh, to the sled base, and we want to make sure that it's flush with the outside here for starters. And then once everything is all set, then we can clamp these down a little bit tighter. And then we can start with some screws. So we've got to get this screw in a little bit past that um, removable section. And this is the, going to be the screw on the far right side. Remember this is back fence, that's screw on the far right side. And we're going to put a screw in on the far left side, but you know, a couple of inches away from that side. So I've pre-drilled them. And now we're installing the screws. And that's it. We're just going to start with two screws because we're going to apply the five cut method to square this fence to the table saw blade. And once we check and get a proper square, we're going to need to remove that screw on the left and adjust the fence to get it perfect. And here's how we're gonna set the miter bars. I have a specific distance for the fence. I don't remember it now, but I'll, I'll remember it in a minute and I'll call it out for you. But it has to be a specific distance from the fence. This is how you will install it as well. Um, but what's important first is to get the miter bar set up. Now this is really critical. Um, you're going to use these set screws, they're steel set screws, and put a little bit of Teflon tape on the set screws. And that's going to make it so the set screws don't rattle out with the vibration of the saw. They're kind of held nicely in place. This Teflon tape is something you might use for plumbing, for example. So we're going to drive it all the way forward to the cup end of the set screw right there. And that's going to stick a teeny bit out that side. So you can see this miter bar wiggles just a little bit from left to right in the slot. And that's because everybody's table saw slots are just very tiny amounts different. So they always make the miter bars a little bit small. So we're going to continually adjust the set screw until it gets a perfect fit and the miter bar has no wiggle left to right. And we're going to do that with each of the set screws that goes in there. We want no wiggle for any of them, but we do want it to slide, so you can't have them too tight or the miter bar won't slide forward and backward. This is the most critical thing that you can do to ensure that your table saw squares and stays square. You cannot get your table saw square to the blade um, because it will move if you don't have these in perfectly. You need to take your time with the two miter bars and these set screws and get them perfect. No wiggle. Make sure you put Teflon tape and you make sure you have no wiggle for any segment. Once you've done that and you install these into the table saw sled, your table saw sled will square very easily and it will stay square for life. So this is a really small um, uh, thing but it's really really critical. It probably takes four or five minutes to set these up, you know, two or three minutes each. Not, not that long at all. But it's very important and here we go. So I've got it fitting perfectly, and there's exactly no wiggle, no movement. You can feel it very easy. You would hear the rattle if it moved, and it slides nicely. You have to do that to both of these. All right, once that's done, uh, for my table saw, the depth there, I've got to put a penny and a dime together because I want that to stick a little bit above the top. Now, I like to use a miter bar that's just a little bit shorter than my sled. This is a couple inches shorter than the sled on each side. That way it never gets in the way when I stack it and store it. Some people like them a little bit longer, but this is just what's uh, convenient for me. So I've measured it on both sides there. I have my fence set exactly. Here we go. There it is at 15 and 7 eighths. That's the dead center. That's so that kerf slices this uh, sled exactly in half with two equal portions on each side. That's important. All right, now we'll put a few drops of this CA glue on. Not too much because it's going to get out and get all over your saw and you got to scrape it off, but you know, enough to where it's going to hold nicely. And then we're going to set this thing in place. Kind of set one side down and just keep pressing it snug against your fence and line it up kind of with the front of your table saw. Pick a point in the front to line it up with and that's it. Hold it down right there. I don't like to spray accelerator here because I like to have the ability to move it just fractionally if I have to. Um, instead I'm going to put some weight on it. Some gravity clamps as it were. A giant nut and a weight. Try to get those right over the miter bars if you can. 
Yeah, let it sit there for about five minutes. See how it glues pretty quick. Then you can lift it right off. All right, now we want to set these guys in permanently. So we're going to drill and screw them in. So same thing, we're going to use this self-centering drill bit again. And of course, the more people you have putting these things in, the better. And we'll put the screws. These screws can be a little bit bigger because we're going through two pieces of wood instead of one, which is nice, but that depends on, you know, what tables you got. I'm just going to kind of clean off any of the CA glue that might have spilled over on the edge. It scrapes off of this aluminum fairly quickly. Then I'm going to go ahead and wax the miter bars, but I'm also going to wax the whole sled again. Remember it had one coat already. This is going to be our second and final coat for the sled. So it's going to be smooth and stay smooth for a nice long time. Every few months, depending on how much you use it, you probably need to wax it again. Uh, it doesn't really need waxed in here because it doesn't slide on the table saw, but we do have to put it so that it, uh, it, uh, it you know, lets moisture in and out equally. You want to finish every part of it equally. That's important. And you saw the sled sl slides perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and make our first cut all the way through the sled. And there it is. Nice. And now it is time to square the table saw sled. We're going to use the five cut method. It's a very popular method. I believe it was invented by William Ng. He's a YouTube woodworker. He has a school. He's, he's a brilliant woodworker. He has fantastic ideas. And so follow along here. I've marked one and I've rotated it clockwise, and then two, then three, then four, and finally five. This is going to be the final cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to just trim a little bit off with each cut. So that's the first cut on number one. Then I'm going to rotate this piece clockwise so that number two is facing the blade. And I'll take a little slice off of that. And we'll rotate it clockwise so number three is about to be cut by the blade. And we'll take a little slice off of that. And we're going to continue in this fashion until we get to the end. And number four. And this last cut finalizes number four. And we're going to cut this one about an inch or so wide because the piece that's off cut there, the five plus one, that's the piece we're going to take measurements on. And we're going to use the data that comes from that to calibrate our measurement. I want to mark A at the top and B at the bottom. That way I know which one is at the, the top end, which one's at the bottom end. We're gonna take calipers. You gotta have calipers here if you wanna get it super accurate. And we're gonna measure this guy. And it looks like I've got 1.6295. And we're gonna measure the other side. And I've got 1.6020. So we'll write those down. And here's the five cut method. So you guys want to go check out William Ng's sled video. I'm going to put a link to it below and you can see how he does it. So this is the formula. So the error per inch is what we're attempting to calculate. And it's really pretty simple. We're going to take the measurement we got from A and subtract the measurement we got from B. Then we're going to divide that by the number of cuts around the circle that was four cuts. Then we're going to divide that entire thing by the length of the board we used to make the five cut method with. And that's going to give us the error per inch of our table saw sled. All right, so the data we had, if you remember, A was 1.6295. Hopefully you can see the 9 there. And B was 1.6020. Make that 9 a little more legible. I'm going to take a photograph of this board at the end. So if you want, you can get a screenshot of it. So you can apply this 5-cut method to, uh, to anything that you do. Works for any type of sled. All right, so the error per inch is going to be simply, I'm going to do this one little piece at a time. 
A minus B, of course, which is 1.6295 minus 1.6020. That's going to get divided by the number of cuts, of course. And I'm just going to do the top part here first. Use the calculator. And 0 0.0275. So 0 0.0275. That's the difference. 0 0.0275. So it's 2.7 hundredths of an inch difference in those two pieces after being cut around that circle five times, or four times, I'm sorry. And so we'll divide that by four. That's the magic of the five cut method, is it magnifies the error to make it easier for us to see. If we just made a single cut, it would be very hard to see. But when we magnify the error, it becomes more visible. When we divide that by four, we see in actuality, we're only 0 0.006875, or I rounded up to 0 0.0069. I want to divide this by our board length, the length of this board that I'm writing on right now, because that's important, because that's going to tell us our error per inch. That 0 0.0069, that's the error for the whole board, and the whole board is 12 inches long. So our error is really only 1 12th of that number. So we'll divide that by 12. So that divided by a 12 inch board, and, I'm, and I'm, I didn't round here, I'm leaving the whole number in the calculator each time. Divide that by 12, and there it is. That's 0 0.0005. That is 5 ten thousandths of an inch. I'll leave the 7 there because I should probably round that up to 6 ten thousandths. That's pretty accurate. That's 6 ten thousandths of an inch off, and that's just by you know trying to keep everything square and neat and tidy. But you know what? That's, uh, we can get more accurate than that. But I'll make a little note here. That's about six ten thousandths of an inch off uh, for each inch of linear cut, which is really, really accurate. But the magic of the five cut method and the whole system and how it works uh, means that we can adjust the fence. So I'm going to write a fence adjustment here. And we can dial that in even tighter. Now you don't have to. If you've got a wonderful number like this, you could just quit. After all, you know, we're dealing with wood, not metal. But I like to start as accurate as we can. All right, so that's the number that we are off. And we multiply that times the length of the fence. Over the whole length of fence, we're off by a larger amount. Let's see what that amount is. Multiply that times 27, the length between the two screws on the fence, basically. And that's 0 0.015. So, we're 15 thousandths off. So if that fence was moved 15 thousandths of an inch, everything would be dead on zero. So now we have to wonder, do we move the fence forward or do we move the fence backwards? And I'm gonna write a note here to explain it or, to, uh, or for you to remember. If the number is positive, of course my, my camera fell off the bottom there. If the number is positive, that number there, if it's a positive number, then you have to move the fence backwards towards you, towards the operator. In order to get it correct. If the number is negative, you can probably already guess. You have to move the fence forward. The opposite direction. In my last video, I kind of explained the mechanism behind why, but this video is already so darn long, I didn't really want to bore you guys. But that's it. That's the five cut method. That's an important way to do this. You could just use the square and square it, and that's close enough for probably 98% of your cuts. But if you want it perfect, and you want to make picture frames, and you want to do you know, all the amazing stuff that this sled can do, then you probably want to take a few minutes and square it up. So here's how you do it. 
So I've got a little board that I've cut to a point, and I'm going to push it up tight against the fence, and I'm going to put a couple of C-clamps in it so it doesn't move. Now I know I'm going to have to move that fence, and remember, I've got to move it, the number's positive, so I've got to move it backwards towards me, the operator, on the left side. I ended up putting a couple screws in it. Okay, so I've got to move it backwards towards me, like that. But I've got to move it by 15 thousandths, remember? That was the error that I got. So 15 thousandths, so you get a feeler gauge. And if you have one that's 15 thousandths, great. If not, then just add two of them up. There's 3 thousandths, and there's 12 thousandths. 0.003, 0.012, 3 thousandths and 12 thousandths together is 15 thousandths. So we're gonna put those together and we're going to set them against the fence and we're going to push the fence tight against there. See, that feeler gauge has now bumped that fence back by 15 thousandths. So while holding it tight, I'm going to clamp the fence in place. I'm going to make sure it stays tight because I'm going to check the feeler gauge obviously before I put some screws in. And we can't use the old holes because it'll just cause the fence to move. So I do have to drill some new holes. If you ever end up uh, filling up all these holes, no problem. You can uh, drive some toothpicks and some glue in and drill a new set. No big deal if you have to move your fence two or three times. That's it. I held it nice and snug. Had to move that clamp to get one more hole here. Watch where you're putting these holes too, right? You don't want to drill one through your zero clearance insert that has to move. That wouldn't be good. I guess you'd find out in a hurry and then you'd have to move it and change it. But there we go and we can see that our, our 15 thousandths there is nice and snug and tight there just like it should be. And we have successfully moved the fence back by that amount. So now it should be dead square and I did go ahead and run one more check on it and it was. Um, I think it was about one uh, ten thousandth off or something like that but it, the, it was so insignificant that it's not, not even worth mentioning. But you should check it a second time in case you made an error. All right, now I'm going to put this on. This is a little safety block so that uh, when the table saw blade comes through the back, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get your hand. It'll come into here first. And it's got plastic on the top so you can see the blade coming through. And we'll just take the... the, uh, the plastic liner off the bottom of that and glue that in place. Give it a couple of sprays. Sometimes the spray fogs up the, the, the plastic a little bit, so if you don't want to do that, you can just uh, put a little bit of weight on it, let it sit for a couple of minutes, and that'll be just fine that way too. And then we want to put it in place. So it's got to be above the zero clearance inserts, and the measurements are such that it, that'll work out perfectly anyway. It'll come right to about the top of the fence, and be above the inserts. Just like that, and we'll spray that. And that's good to go. If it ever falls off, you can spray it again. Uh, I've never really had a problem with it falling off. Um, if you put too little glue, I suppose it could. It's just there to keep you from putting your hand there. All right, now I'm gonna put the back zero clearance inserts on. And that's a big advantage that this uh, sled had over my old sled, is that uh, it's zero clearance on the base and the back, which is kind of nice. Okay, remember we had put some extra screws into this front fence in order to keep it stable while we did our squaring. Because just the two, um, the two T-bolts and the star knobs don't hold it quite strong enough for that. But you can see that works good. It's a quick release. It's always best if you're going to take that off if you leave the fit the, the sled in the T-tracks. Then the sled can't move at all. If you do take it out like that, it's fine. You just may wiggle a little bit on you. But if you leave it in the T-track, it's just fine. And there we go.
So the last thing we want to do, and that will wrap up this half of the video, is to go ahead and set the zero clearance insert to the blade. So I've got a 1 8 inch uh, piece of wood that I've cut there, a little shim, and I can put that in one side and the blade in the other. If I don't want to cut a shim, I can just move the sled forward and, and measure it to the blade on both sides. And we'll do the same thing with the zero clearance insert at the back, use the shim, or I can simply move the uh, sled forward so that the blade's in that spot and do that. And we'll tighten these up at the back as well. We want to put these all in hand tight. We don't want to use any machinery to drive these down because they'll put a dent in that shelf and that's not good. So there we go. That's all set. And there's the sled. So I have another half to this video coming out where I'm going to show you how to make all of the fancy parts that turn this sled into a miter sled and a dado sled and a, a picture frame sled and all those other things. So hopefully you'll stay tuned. That's, uh, that's going to come out tomorrow. And if uh, this has already been out for a while, then it's just the next video in the sequence. It's a two-parter and it's a long video, but it shows you detail step by step exactly how to get it done. So just a quick recap of all the things it can do. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.